दिलों में प्यार की खुशबू तो होठो पर दुआ रखना इमा में वक्त से एक रिश्ता इश्को वफा रखना इमा में वक्त से एक रिश्ता इश्को वफा रखना इमा में वक्त से एक रिश्ता रहमतुल्लाहि व बरकातहु एंड बोंजूर my dear viewers, welcome to Friday Sermon for Kids. My name is Ishaq Fonseca and joining me on today's episode is Ramis and Khaliq. Assalamu alaikum guys. Wa alaikum assalam Rabbi Sahib. Well you know in today's Friday Sermon our beloved Hazur, he continued to talk about the siege with the Banu Khareza tribe and also their punishment for breaking the peace treaty with the Muslims. But you know before we jump into our discussion, why don't we listen to a clip from the sermon. اوس قبیلے کے موزوزین رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی خدمت میں حاضر ہوئے اور کہنے لگے کہ یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم بنو قریضہ ہمارے حلیف ہیں عید چھکنی کی وجہ سے ہمارے حلیف بھی نادم و پریشان ہیں بس ان کو ہماری خاطر بخشتے ہیں رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم خاموش بیٹھے رہے یہاں تک کہ اوس کا اصرار بڑھنے لگا اور اوس کے سارے لوگ ہی آ گئے اور التجا کرنے لگے تو رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا کیا تم اس بات پر راضی ہو کہ ان کے بارے میں فیصلہ تم میں سے ہی ایک شخص کے حوالے کر دیا جائے سب نے کہا کیوں نہیں اور نے فرمایا یہ معاملہ سات دن معاذ کے سپرد کیا جاتا ہے Okay, well, um, before we start the discussion, I'd love to know from you guys what points you learned from the Friday Sermon. Murabi Saab, my point from the Friday Sermon is that when the Jews were arrested by the Muslims, they collected spoils of war which were 300 chainmail armor, 1,500 swords, 200 spears, 1,500 leather shields, and many other items including clothes, cutlery, camels, and many other animals and items. Murabi Saab, what <laughs> I learned from Azur, May Allah be his help us write a sermon, is that the Holy Prophet وسلم, took out some spoils of war for Allah and his messenger وسلم, and the rest were distributed amongst the army of the Muslims. Well, mashallah, those are very good points, you guys, and we'll definitely go further into uh, more discussion about them uh, in our uh, program. So in the beginning of the sermon, our beloved Azur, Ayatollah Talib and Aziz, he explained about that siege that had happened with uh, Banu Khareza tribe because they had actually failed to, uh, you know, uh, attack the Muslims from within inside Medina. So then uh, what they did was they just locked themselves up in the fortress which, which they had. And this lasted for about uh, 20 days. And um, uh, after that, they decided that, you know, they would, they would finish this and they'll, they'll just uh, give up themselves and let the Muslims decide what was their fate for their treachery? Uh, now, do you guys remember uh, what were some of the things that happened after that? That somebody should be appointed to decide their punishment. Yes, uh, that's correct. So uh, who was the person actually who they all decided, agreed, uh, would make that decision? Murabi Sahib, it was Hajjid Saad bin Muad radhiallahu anhu. Yes, so um, you know what had actually happened was that first they actually uh, disagreed that uh, Muhammad وسلم, should be the judge to make the decision. Uh, and uh, what they had actually thought, that the tribe which they were most uh, close with, that, they, that that tribe would be more lenient with them on the decision. So they asked uh, from that tribe, which was called the, tri the tribe of Aus, and uh, from among them they appointed a person by, uh, which was already mentioned, Saad Razila Tala Anho. And uh, he was a very just person, but Hazur mentioned that he wasn't as, um, as um, you know, merciful and as kind as the Holy Prophet وسلم, is and would have been if he made a decision. He wasn't as merciful? Yes, you know, actually his decision was quite harsh because the Holy Prophet وسلم, if he was made the judge, he would have actually forgiven them all. Now, um, the sentence which, uh, that Hazrat Saad 
Razila Tala Anho gave. Uh, do you remember what that was and can you tell the audience uh, what the details were about it? Rabbi Sahib, I remember. All those men that fought against the Muslims will be sentenced to death. Yes, you, know, you see that was uh, very harsh. Now what else? That, woman, that the women and children were separated from the men and were taken as prisoners. Yes, and uh, what also happened with uh, their wealth and property? Their wealth was given amongst the Muslims and their houses were given to the Muhajireen. Yes, and you know when the Holy Prophet wasallam heard uh, this sentence, he said that your verdict is a divine decree. You know, this meant that uh, nothing could now change the decision that he made and Allah was going to be the one who was going to punish them for their crimes. Murabi Sahib, didn't the Holy Prophet want to show mercy to those who were going to be put to death? Yes, so uh, he was actually desiring that uh, he would give them release and also forgiveness. And that's also why uh, we see that the Holy Prophet وسلم, he went to the place where their penalty was taking place so that he would be there if anyone would make a, an appeal for forgiveness and then he would grant that to them. And uh, the proof of this is that actually there was one man who appeal came from one woman and the Holy Prophet وسلم, forgave him. And uh, another incident actually happened where uh, the Holy Prophet وسلم, he indicated to one Jewish man by the name of Ka'ab bin Asad that uh, is, is, accept Islam, meaning that he would be spared his life. But this person, you know, his response was that um, he would like to do it, but if he were to do it after, people would think that he accepted Islam only to spare his life. Uh, but before, you know, we go any further with our discussion, it's actually time for the word of the sermon. And the word of the sermon is Rahmatul Alameen, and explaining that will be Shayan. So over to you, Shayan. So, guys, Rahmatul Alameen in Arabic means in mercy for all mankind. It is also a title given to the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, by Allah in the Holy Quran, chapter Al Ambiya. Verse 108. The verse says, And we have sent thee not but as a mercy for all peoples. In today's sermon, our beloved Hazur, may Allah be his helper, described so many ways that the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, showed mercy and kindness against the Banu Qurayza even after all the crimes that they committed against the Muslims. Over to you, Mirbisab. Mashallah, really good job, Shayan. So let's go back to the discussion about uh, the punishment that was given to Banu Khureza for their treachery. Hazur actually mentioned that uh, there are some youth actually who have some question about it. So, um, you know, the thing which it's a very important to know is that, uh, first of all, the Holy Prophet, as I mentioned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was, he was uh, they disagreed that he would make the judgment, right? And secondly, after they appointed uh, someone to make their uh, judgment, they agreed on that. And also uh, they said that we will agree for his, uh, you know, his uh, judgment. And um, could you ever think that uh, if I ask you the question, in today's day and age in the court, if someone who has committed uh, attempted murder or even treason, that in the court they could ask the court, can you appoint the, the judge that, that I want? No, definitely not. Rabbi Saab, I also think no, because it will be totally biased. Yes, exactly. You know, and uh, this was actually in itself a great uh, mercy from the Holy Prophet wasallam that he allowed them to appoint their own judge. And, uh, you know, Allah uh, had actually made it in such a way that the Holy Prophet ﷺ would not have anything to do with the punishment of the Banu Khureza. And uh, another thing that we see is that uh, even after that decision was made, the Holy Prophet ﷺ, he came there uh, and made himself ready that if anyone had a plea uh, of uh, you know, forgiveness, he would allow it. 
You know, there was uh, one lady who uh, was put to death because she actually killed one of the Muslim uh, men. And uh, there, this was beyond the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to, uh, to stop that, to prevent it. And uh, one other thing, you know, I would like to add that Hazur mentioned about the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's mercy is that uh, he was greatly disturbed by uh, the outcome of the decision. And uh, Hazur mentioned that uh, uh, one of the th reasons that we knew that was because he had, he had uh, expressed on how much he had wished that uh, this tribe of Jews would accept Islam. And instead, actually, instead of accepting Islam, they earned the, the punishment of Allah. Uh, you know, now it's the time for uh, the next part of our program, which is the question of the sermon. So as always, you know, you're going to have uh, 10 seconds after I ask the question. Okay, so the question is that uh, when the spoils of war were distributed, what was the percentage that was given to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Was it A, one third? Or was it B, two thirds? Or was it C, one fourth? Or D, one fifth? Okay, time's up. I think it's D, one-fifth. Murabi Sahab, I also think it's D, one-fifth. MashaAllah, well, both you guys are right again. Alhamdulillah, yes. So do you guys remember any other examples of the Holy Prophet Wasallam where he showed mercy to the Banu Khareza tribe? That the women should not be separated from their babies until they grow up. Yes, exactly. Anything else? That if there are two young sisters, they should not separate until they grow up. Right, and about these women and children, what happened with them? They were released on ransom. Yes, exactly. So this, um, this uh, ransom or money was given for their freedom. You know, this is just a small penalty for the very big crimes that they committed. Murad Bisab, when the women were taken prisoner, they were given fruit, which it is said they ate all night. Yes, and you know, another thing that I'd like to mention, which Hazur Aydullah Ta'ala bin Asur Aziz, he said that um, there was a person who made a false claim uh, about the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that person was named uh, Sir William Muir. And he said that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had taken from among these women a slave girl. And uh, uh, this name of the girl, her name was Rihanna. And... Um, uh, but what Hazur said is that uh, this is actually not an, uh, an authentic uh, hadith. And, uh, and also he added that um, uh, it should have been mentioned in Sahih Bukhari because the account of Sahih Bukhari, it mentions that uh, these, uh, when these uh, women were being uh, you know, sent to the, uh, the Muslims, uh, it doesn't mention anywhere that uh, it was, any girl was given to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is another proof that this was, this was uh, wrong. Uh, and also, um, there's also mention in another uh, narration that this girl actually was, was set free from the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she went uh, to live with her family. Murad Bishab, were all the children and women sold on a ransom or were they set free like the one you just talked about? Well, actually, that's a really good question. So according to the authentic hadith, uh, the women actually got their release from paying ransom, which the money they earned from themselves. Uh, and another way which they got release was, was that the Holy Prophet Wasallam, for some of them, through an act of mercy, he actually let them go free without any payment. Uh, and over time, uh, it's mentioned that uh, these uh, ha women had actually converted to Islam. Now, uh, in the end, uh, Hazur mentioned some advice for the Muslims. Uh, what was that? That Muslims are misbehaving with one another and are giving a bad name of Muslims to the world. Hazur prayed that may Allah give sense to these Muslims. 
Well, this brings us to the end of the program and the review and what we learned from today's Friday sermon. Well, I learned that the Holy Prophet ﷺ is compassionate and loving to others. I learned that when Allah makes a final decision, nothing can change that. Well, what I learned from today's Friday sermon is that uh, in the extreme case of war, we should deal with our enemies and the family of our enemies with kindness and understanding. And remember guys to always watch Hazur's full khutbah. Until next time from Montreal. Khuda Hafiz! Magar hai shart tum se Musalsal rabta rakhna Magar hai shart tum se مسلسل رابطہ رکھنا امام وقت سے ایک رشتہ عشق و وفا رکھنا دلوں میں پیار کی خوشبو تو ہونٹوں پر دعا رکھنا امام وقت سے ایک رشتہ عشق و وفا رکھنا امام وقت سے ایک رشتہ عشق و وفا رکھنا